to My Hot Kitchen. I'm Wendy and I'm excited for you to try out this romantic feast on your next date night in. Tonight's dinner features braised short ribs with spicy plum sauce, ginger scented rice, garlicky sesame snow peas, and for dessert, petite apple upside down cakes. So let's get started on the petite apple cakes first. So with the first ingredient that you're gonna need is about a tablespoon of butter. You can need to get that melted here in a nice warm saute pan. Then once you get the butter mostly melted, you wanna go ahead and add one slice, cored and peeled, crisp apple. One that has some tartness to it. Think a Granny Smith or a Pink Lady. And lay it out in the butter. These apples are gonna form the base of your delicious petite apple upside down cakes. You're gonna caramelize them and then you're gonna build the cake on top of them. It's gonna be really delicious. Give them a little toss in the butter here. What you wanna do is just soften them up a little bit and allow them to caramelize. Which brings me to my next ingredient, which is a quarter cup of loosely packed brown sugar. You wanna add that in before it gets too hot in there. Give it a little toss and give it the opportunity to mix with the butter. So keep your temperature on a nice low heat and allow the butter and the brown sugar to caramelize together kind of slowly. It's gonna be a magical combination. It's gonna taste delicious in the bottom of those cakes. You can see how as you mix it up, the butter soaks up the brown sugar and starts the cooking process. I'm just gonna leave these alone for a few moments while we make the cake batter. So the cake batter is the simplest cake batter ever. It's one of those one bowl cakes. So sift together three quarters of a cup of flour, one half cup of lightly packed brown sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, one eighth a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. You can also substitute a spice blend like speculus or pumpkin spice, pie spice. You just wanna work with something that is gonna be very cinnamon forward in its flavor profile. Now the whole purpose of this sifting is to blend together all the dry ingredients and eliminate lumps. Because nobody wants lumps in their cake. It ends up being strange little particles of flour or hard little bits of baked sugar. So work those out before you mix up your batter. The next ingredient to add is gonna be a quarter cup of butter. You want this to be nice and soft and at room temperature. One more ingredient, an egg. And whisk these together. Blend them lovingly. Just when you start to see them incorporate, your final ingredient comes in. It's a quarter cup of milk. Blend this for about two minutes. You're gonna love the flavor of this cake. All spicy and sweet and rich. It's a great cake for autumn. I can see that I've built up a little bit of debris on the sides and I definitely want all those ingredients to incorporate into my cake batter here. So I'm gonna give my bowl a little scrape. I'm also gonna scrape the bottom of the bowl, work it all into the middle, and continue beating it. looks pretty good to me. Let's go back and check on those apples. Well that's fun. The bubbling is the sugar and the butter mixing together to make a quick little caramel sauce. Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna give these apples just a couple more minutes because I want to see them develop a bit more softness than I'm seeing right now.
let's take a look see and see how these are doing. They are nice and hot and they are just starting to get soft so they're at the perfect point to go ahead and pull them off the heat and stop them from cooking. <clears throat> and now on to the next part. So you'll want a muffin tin that you've prepared by buttering it heavily and then adding a little flour over the top so that you get a great non-stick coating. And then take these gorgeous little cooked apples and drop them in the bottom of the muffin tin. Put at least one in each well. And for the chunks that are a little bit smaller, go ahead and add a couple. Remember, this is very hot stuff. So handle it carefully. Now I'm gathering all my caramel into one side of the pan here because I'm going to want to add that as a little drizzle on top of the apples to help enhance the flavor, add to the gooiness and the yumminess, and really bring back that old childhood memory of caramel dipped apples. That should be sufficient right there. Nice little pooling of caramel on each and every well. Now just a nice little spooning of the batter on top of the apple and caramel. You don't want to fill these up. In fact, you don't even want to take them past halfway. Otherwise, they will turn into cupcakes. Not that there's anything wrong with cupcakes. However, this recipe is for petite little cakes, so you don't necessarily want to build a crown on top of them. And if you fill them up too full, that's what you'll get. Use my spatula here to get the rest of the batter off the spoon and into one of my little wells. And then it's time to bake these off. So I have my oven preset to 350 degrees and I'm estimating these are going to take about 20 minutes. Those are going to be so yummy. Wow, these smell so good. The smell of apples and caramel and cake are just filling the house. So tasty. So make sure you give these guys about five to ten minutes to rest before you try to free them up from the pan so that they stay together. Yummy! These little beauties are out of the pan and you'll notice that I placed them with the apples up because they're apple upside down cakes. Now when it comes time to serve them to your sweetie, top them off with a nice little loving dollop of whipped cream, maybe a little sprinkle of cinnamon. Now it's time to start working on the braised short ribs. So the first thing that you're going to need is a Dutch oven or some sort of heavy cast iron skillet that is pre-warmed and then take your short ribs and put them right in there. You want to make sure you have a nice high heat in there so that you get a good sear on them. I'm going to sprinkle them with a little bit of black pepper at this point just to kind of aid in the development of the flavor. And the main reason that you're searing them is to add texture and depth and complexity to the final dish. So you want to allow the short ribs to sear on both sides for a few minutes. The first indicator that will tell you they are ready for the flip is that when you go in to grab them with the tongs, they'll release easily. These are not there yet, which means they need more time to develop that color. Look at that. Got a little blood coming to the top on that one. That's always a good sign that they're ready for a flip as well. Easy release. 
Mmm, nice brown color. A lot of flavor up in there. Quite tasty. Love how the cast iron creates a natural non-stick finish that makes this easy. Let these sear for a few minutes on this side till they match the first side. Oh, these look great. Now take them out, set them on the plate. Watch out for that squirting oil. It'll get you. And then speaking of that oil, you certainly don't need all of that to make this a delicious meal. So what you're gonna wanna do is pour quite a bit of it off. Use a nice heat proof dish. Maybe a little spatula to help gather it all up. And get most all of the fat out of there. You certainly don't need it, like I said. Just adds extra fat and calories. Now that you've reduced the amount of fat in there, you wanna go ahead and add half of an onion that you've sliced up into nice thick slices. And a couple cloves of very coarsely chopped garlic. Hold on to this chili pepper, you're gonna need it, but not quite yet. Now give these guys a little love. Give them a chance to get exposure to all that wonderful fat that you just rendered out of the short ribs. Let them come to just a point of barely translucent before you carry on to the next step. So while the onions saute, let's talk about Dutch ovens for a moment. There's two basic types on the market. There's a traditional cast iron one, like you see me working with, and then there's cast iron that have been dipped into some sort of enamel. Those are the ones that are in pretty colors. Now, the basic principle of the Dutch oven is the same. It works well on the stovetop, but it also works well in the oven. I prefer the cast iron type because the seasoning imparts a special flavor on all of your foods. And also, cleanup is an absolute cinch with a traditional cast iron skillet. You can use whichever one you like. This is just the type I happen to favor. Well, these onions are looking pretty happy. They're just starting to turn clear. Seeing a little bit of browning on them, that's perfect. That's gonna go very well with the beefy flavor of this dish. The next element is to add one coarsely chopped plum. I prefer to use the black plums. Give those a moment here in the pot with the onions and the garlic. Well, let's add those gorgeous short ribs back in here now. Mmm, yummy. Wow, those look great. They're not quite tender enough to eat just yet, so avoid the temptation to take a bite out of it. Now we're gonna add some beef stock to this. So on our website, hotkitchenonline.com, I have a blog on stock cookery. And in there, I talk about reducing your stock down to a glaze and then freezing it as an ice cube to be added to your dishes later on. So there's my ice cube of beef stock. I'm gonna reconstitute it with a cup of water. And as that water heats, the stock will melt and infiltrate every nook and cranny of this dish. And finally, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of soy sauce in there. Remember, you can always add more. The flavor will concentrate as it cooks. And one little Thai chili in its dry form, stuffed right in there. Add about an ounce of sherry. That's gonna add a nice complexity and enhance the sweetness of the plum sauce. And then I notice that there's some drippings here on this plate that I set the short ribs on. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that off and throw it back in the dish. That extra little element of flavor. Now, the pot is up to a boil, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on it and take it over to the oven. The oven is gonna do the job of finishing. We will need to check on it a few times as it goes through the baking process. Got my oven still set at 350 degrees, and I'll check on it in about 20 minutes. So let's see what this looks like at about 20 minutes into the process here. Take a little peek. Ooh, yum. That looks divine. 
can see the onions and the plums are breaking down nicely and you know that beef's gonna get good and tender with all of that stock in there. Put that lid back on, give it about another 20 minutes, and then we'll come back for the finishing touches. And now it's time to move on to the ginger scented rice. So the first step in the rice is to get your water boiling. You're gonna need one and a half cups of water. So in my rice cooking experience, I noticed that I get a better result when I bring the water to a boil first, then add the seasonings, and then the rice. This is the perfect time to go ahead and start adding the seasonings. I have a half teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar. I also have a tablespoon of rice vinegar and of course, ginger. I have about one or two teaspoons here of very coarsely chopped ginger. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in right now so that as the water comes up to a boil, it begins to extract the flavor. Now that we have a full boil, I can go ahead and add my rice. Tonight, I'm using three quarters of a cup of Calrose rice to one and a half cups water, so a one to two proportion. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with a lid and drop the heat way down low. So as it cooks, the rice is gonna infuse with the flavors of the ginger. The salt and the sugar and the vinegar are, help to, are going to help to enhance that, make it really full and rich and delicious. Yum. Take a little look here and see how these short ribs are doing. Should be ready for their final step. Oh yes, oh yes. Now I can tell they're ready for the final step, which is cooking off the liquid and browning them a little bit because the onions and the plums are pretty much liquefied right now. So I'm gonna rotate my short ribs so that the meat side is up and I'm gonna return this into the oven with the lid off and I'm gonna turn up the heat to 400 degrees. And that will allow the water to cook off and will also allow the plums to develop a nice sugary coating that caramelizes beautifully and makes a very sumptuous meal for you and your sweetie. Now on to the final dish, the sesame garlic snow peas. I'm gonna start by adding a little oil to my nice hot saute pan here. Swirling it around the pan for just a moment to allow it to get all nice and warm and left up. And I'm gonna add two cloves of minced up garlic and just a few slices of red onion. That little toss here. Just wanna wait till those start to become aromatic. And then we'll add the two cups of fresh snow peas. Those a little toss, yum. Now since these are so small and thin, they aren't gonna take much more than three to five minutes to cook. So toss them to coat them in the oil, which by the way, you can use whatever sort of cooking oil you have on hand, but if you happen to have peanut or sesame oil on hand, those are gonna be really good to use. Sprinkling on a tablespoon of sesame seeds and continuing to toss. And also, a few drops of soy sauce and a little bit of black pepper to season it up. You'll notice there's a lot of Asian influences in this meal. That's why I love it. Mmm, that smells really good. You can smell the sesame seeds toasting and the soy sauce just brought out the aroma of the whole deal. All right, I'm gonna let those sit there for a few moments and now it's time to get the short ribs out of the oven. I'm very excited about these. Mmm, yum. And now we can get busy plating. I'm gonna try dunking my spoon in a little bit of water here before I scoop out the rice. Helps to make an easier release. Mmm, wow, that smells really good. The ginger is tickling my nose. Love it. And now, let's bring in these short ribs here. Yum. 
beautiful. Meat is positively falling off the bones here. Exactly what you want to see. That's how you know they're oh so tender. Spoon up a little bit of the sauce. And lovingly pour it over the top. Snow peas, a final toss. Add those onto the plate. What a magnificent looking feast that is. One that is sure to make your sweetie's tummy rumble. Serve this up with a red wine. I'd recommend a nice soft Merlot or perhaps something as simple as a red table wine. So call in your sweetie and share this delicious feast with them. Goodbye, Edwin. Hi. Wow, you look beautiful. Mm, thank you. I know dinner's on. Wow, look at that. Mmm. 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 Thank you, dear. You're welcome. It's so good. Oh, I can't wait for you to try it all. Mmm. Mm. Mm. This is such a hot kitchen. Mm. Hot kitchen. So thanks for joining me in my hot kitchen tonight. Have fun turning up the heat in your kitchen, and I'll see you next week. Night night.